This is Dr. William Huang. I want to thank you for viewing this presentation today. During this brief presentation, we will be reviewing robotic radical prostatectomy for the treatment of prostate cancer. Hopefully, by the conclusion of this presentation, you will have a better understanding and some insight into the procedure and what it entails. So let's begin by discussing the anatomic location of the prostate. The prostate is a walnut-shaped gland that's located below the bladder and anterior or on top of the rectum. As you can see from this frontal view, the prostate completely surrounds the urethra, which is a tube which strains urine out of the body. The purpose of the prostate and other glands in the body is to make semen. These other glands include the seminal vesicle, which is located at the base of the prostate, and makes fluid for the semen. Other important landmarks to note include the pelvic floor, or the urinary sphincter, as well as the neurovascular bundles. This is a side view of the prostate in relationship to the rectum, the bladder, and the urethra. And this is a cartoon representation of a prostate cancer within the prostate gland. Other anatomic organs which are important to note include regional or pelvic lymph nodes, which are often a common site of spread in men who develop prostate cancer. So radical prostatectomy is the procedure in which the prostate, as well as the seminal vesicles and potentially the lymph nodes, are removed. Radical prostatectomy is typically performed through two surgical approaches. Through the surgical approach on the left, we can see that a single incision is made below the belly button down to the pubic bone. This approach is called the open approach to radical prostatectomy. Another type of approach uh, is through the use of multiple small incisions or keyhole incisions. Each incision ranges from the size of a dime to approximately the size of a quarter. This approach is often called minimally invasive surgery or laparoscopic surgery. During laparoscopic surgery, the assistant and the surgeon stand at the bedside and hold the instruments and the camera, which is placed into the patient in order to perform the surgery. Laparoscopic surgery, however, can also be performed through the use of robotic assistance. The benefits of robotic assistance include the use of up to four instruments, including the camera, which is under direct control of the surgeon. In addition, the robotic approach allows for 3D visualization of the surgical field, as well as the use of jointed or wristed instruments, which provide seven degrees of freedom, most replicating the human wrist. This is a cartoon representation of a typical robotic operating room. The setup includes the robot and the cart. The robot holds the camera as well as three instruments, which is controlled by the surgeon who is sitting at the console. In addition to the surgeon, a bedside assistant, frequently a physician's assistant or a resident, is at the bedside exchanging instruments and providing exposure as well as tissue handling. Here you can see a photograph of a typical robotic operating room. Again, we have the robot as well as the bedside assistant, a circulating nurse or a scrub nurse, as well as the surgeon at the console. Some of the platforms allow for two surgeons 
by having two separate consoles. During radical prostatectomy, for removal of the prostate and seminal vesicles, the prostate is removed with the seminal vesicles and potentially the neurovascular bundles. This leaves in place the bladder as well as the urethra. However, depending on the location of the cancer, the neurovascular bundles may be preserved, maximizing the chance that a man can achieve erections following surgery. After removal of the prostate, the bladder is then brought down to the urethra and sewn into place or reconnected. A catheter known as a Foley catheter is then placed across the connection, also known as the anastomosis, in order to allow for drainage of urine out of the body while the anastomosis heals. As previously mentioned, depending on the aggressiveness and the stage of the cancer, the lymph nodes, which are located in the pelvis near the prostate, may also be removed with the prostate during radical prostatectomy. Finally, a drain may be left in place at the conclusion of the procedure However, the strain is frequently removed prior to discharge from the hospital. Patients, however, are discharged from the hospital with the Foley catheter in place and returned to the office for removal of the catheter. Robotic radical prostatectomy typically involves an overnight stay, and the catheter is left in place for approximately five to seven days. Most men are able to resume normal physical activity within two to four weeks of surgery. The benefits of robotic prostatectomy over traditional open prostatectomy include less blood loss, shorter hospital stay, and faster recovery. It is important to note some common side effects after prostatectomy, which may include temporary lack of urinary control and loss of erections. In addition, some men develop swelling or bruising in the scrotum and testicles following the surgery. Many of these side effects are temporary and resolve shortly after surgery. This is expedited through the use of pelvic floor exercises, in which case a man can strengthen his pelvic floor and regain continence and urinary control, as well as the use of oral medications in order to accelerate the return of erections following radical prostatectomy. In conclusion, radical prostatectomy is a safe and effective treatment for many men with localized prostate cancer. For additional information, particularly regarding both preoperative and postoperative instructions, as well as Kegel exercises, refer to the website listed below. Thank you for listening to this brief presentation regarding radical robotic prostatectomy. For additional videos, as well as additional information, or to contact my office, please scan the QR code shown here, or visit the website listed on this particular slide. Thank you.